Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> How's everybody? Blessed. Blessed, highly favored. Why? Because we have a choice Amen. to rejoice. Amen? Amen? And we're going to choose to rejoice. Unless you want to be miserable, but of course when you're miserable, go home, get in your closet, and don't tell anybody you know Jesus until you come out rejoicing. Because Jesus is not miserable. And neither are his children. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you, there's something that happens when you go after God with all your heart. Amen. You touch him, he touches you. Amen. And then you fall in love with his presence, and there's nothing that can replace that presence. Nothing. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how many people you sleep with. I don't care how much dope you use. Nothing can fulfill the presence of God. Nothing. And we get to that point. See, we must become lovers of his presence. If you're not lovers of his presence, you've got a problem. Amen. Then you're a lover of yourself. You. Hello? I'm going to say that again. If you're not a lover of his presence, you're a lover of yourself, and you're your own idol. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's why Jesus said, look at it. You want to follow me? There's something you've got to do. Get rid of you. Amen. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross, which is the sword, and follow we should be fighters for his presence, fighters for his will, fighters for his glory. That's what we are fighters for. We no longer have a life for us. We fight for his life, not ours. You're still fighting for your life. You're in survival mode, and you will sink. Amen. When you surrender, he moves. Amen? Amen? It's when you get our paws out of it that his hand comes in it. Anything you and I touch, he removes from. That's why he says follow. In fact, that's what the word believe means, right? He says, if you believe me, you follow me. If you don't believe me, you go your own way. Then you don't believe me. Amen. And if you tell people you believe me, you lie. Amen. It's real simple. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you, there's a move of God, and God is calling his children, calling his children home, trying to train them up to kick butt. Amen. Glory. First John chapter 5. This is for you tonight. <laughs> so don't look at anybody else and think it's for them. It's for you. <laughs> oh, glory. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Now, we are in a training session. This is no Bible religious thing. Amen. We're being trained up. Training for what? Reigning. We had enough religious garbage. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, the devil brings religion. God brings freedom. He brings a kingdom. That's why he's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the army. We are in a military operation. We're to be soldiers trained up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5, verse 11. Would you read it with me? Are you ready? Turn to your manual. In verse 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. That means those who follow. Amen. Amen. That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may what? Continue. continue to believe means continue to follow. In other words, the enemy, you must be prepared for the enemy's interruption. If you're not prepared for his interruption, you're not in the spirit because he tells you all things to come. He's telling you, listen, there's a trap set. You're about to be tested. God never interrupts himself. Never. Never. While you and I are praising and worshiping, don't pick your Bible up and start reading it because I'm going to throw my Bible at you. <laughs> and you're going to get hit with the word. <laughs> That's stinking religion. God doesn't interrupt himself. Why well, I got a word from God. Oh, shut up, put that down, or lift your hands and get a real word from him. Repent and try again. That's that button. Boom, boom. God never interrupts himself. When he sets you to do something, you do it. 
the enemy always interrupts. Always. That's his job. Why? He tries to stray us off. You know what happens when you go off course? Did you ever notice that when you're driving on the road and you're trying to do something, you start going off the road and those little rump, bumpy things, you know, those, oh, that's what happens. You get turbulence. When we get drift from God, what happens? He allows us to drift into his fire. In fact, he'll even allow us to drift into sifting. So we get back on course. The word says he chastens those he loves, doesn't he? He allows things to happen sometimes. He says, well, you lost focus of me. What happened to me and you? Something's come between us. Hello? All right. Praise God. And these things I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Lord and the Son of God, that you may, that you may, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe or follow in the Son of God. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears it. Well, that means you're going to have to have a relationship. He hears it all. And let me tell you, he answers everything. Even no answer is an answer. <laughs> and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will forgive him, forgive him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. Let me tell you something about not things that are not leading to death. But they can still be a stumbling block to you. Sin always is the wages of sin is what? Death. So there may be sin not leading to death. Smoking may not be sin not leading to death. But you smoke long enough, you're going to die. Hello. Just because you, you know, does everybody, you may make a mistake in sin because anything that's without faith is sin. Amen? But it doesn't mean you're leading to death, but eventually it will lead to death. Amen? But then there's sin that says, you're going to die. You continue that way. And that's what he says. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that you should pray about it. Don't pray about sin leading to death. Oh, God, should I stay in this fornication? Should I continue to cheat on my spouse? Or should I continue to lie at work and steal? Gosh, Lord, I wonder what I should do. How dumb can we be and still breathe? Amen? Amen. That's sin leading on to death. Using drugs, alcohol is sin leading on to death. Why? Because you open yourself to demonic activity. It's black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. Amen? Amen. People want well, alcohol ain't that. Yeah, it's just liquid dope. Amen. That's why people get stupid. If anyone, um, and, and, verse 17, would you read it with me? All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Hello? In other words, it's the sin is the presence of evil. We don't associate with things that are evil. We walk away from it. We expose it. But if you're not walking in the spirit, you'll compromise it. Amen. You'll pet it. You won't hate it. See, when you're filled with the spirit, you hate darkness. Why? Because darkness brings deception. And you know that in that darkness is sin. Is everybody with me? But he who has been born of God keeps himself. So that's a born-again state of being that you and I must walk in. That's staying filled with the Spirit of God. That's the second chamber of the tabernacle. What the enemy tries to do is get you out from the second chamber into the first chamber. And the wicked one does not touch him who is keeping himself clean. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the what? The sway. The interruption. Of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from yourself. 
Amen? <laughs> Listen, there are areas where, you know, in other words, continue to follow. The enemy comes with interruptions. He causes misleading. He causes delays. He puts us on a track of deception, which opens the door to more influence of confusion. Then what he does is he tries to get you into an area where you become anxious and make hasty decisions that cause us to show, sow in the flesh. Remember, God never interrupts himself. Anything that's interrupting God ain't God. James chapter 1. In verse 12. What's the first word? Blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Cursed. Hello. So blessed is the man who endures temptation. Curses is the man who doesn't. You want to curse? Go ahead. Touch the unclean things. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been tested by God, he will be approved. <laughs> he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised those who love him. Now, let no one say that when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot tempt be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. He, Who is he allowed to tempt you? The devil. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his emotional attachments Amen. or his desires or his lusts and enticed, in other words, enticed to continue or grab hold of or make place for it. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Ooh, snap. In other words, God allows testing. What's he, why? He wants to approve us so he can trust us. Amen? Amen? So he can trust us. 1 Peter chapter 1. It's tested for trusting Hallelujah. Is everybody there? And let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant, abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you and me who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. You have been tested. That the what? Genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. This grace is called God's plan. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings. Everyone say sufferings. Suffering. Sufferings are testings. Sufferings are trials. Sufferings are tribulations. Everyone suffers. There's a purpose for it. It's a test. Every test and trial is associated with suffering. Two things, to expose your enemy and remove impurities from us. Oh, yeah. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow to them it was revealed not to themselves, but to us. They were ministering the things which have now been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. These things which 
angels desire to look into. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. In other words, be alert. Rest your hope fully upon the grace, the plan of God that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. See, he's testing the genuineness of your faith. Now again, faith is spiritual sight. There's no such thing as blind faith. Well, I'm walking in blind faith. Well, that's stupid. There's no such thing. The Bible never speaks of blind faith. Faith comes by hearing. When you hear, you see. Amen? When God speaks, you see it, then you move. So you're obeying. So faith is actually called spiritual sight. So we are being tested for service. Is everybody with me? Say, I'm being tested for service. One of the things God wants us to know, he wants to know if we can see. He said, I come to bring what? Sight to the blind. This is called the vision of faith. Everyone say, vision of faith. First Corinthians chapter 10. That's the name of tonight's training, vision of faith. <laughs> Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 10. Everyone say, faith is not blind. Faith, is not blind. faith sees. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Let's read it. Moreover, brethren, I did not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Falls. Now, are you ready? No temptation is overtaking you except for such as common to man. But God is what? Faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to what? Bear it. Bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from what? From idolatry. We are tempted. God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what you can handle. God brings us to our limits. In other words, we're almost out. I want to call it the edge of the ledge. <laughs> you know, it's a place where he brings us to the end so that he wants to know if you're going to trust him. If he says, step off, hello? We trust him no matter what. The edge of the ledge is a place of trust in him. When things get tough, you must allow God to work it to the good. We don't throw in the towel. We don't stop. We don't run. We fight. Amen? Because we're supposed to be soldiers. How would you like to give up on the person that's drowning in front of you? Well, I can't reach them. See ya. Snap. 
What do you think is going on? People are dying left and right out there. God is testing us. Listen, things are going to get tough. You're going to be tried at your jobs. You're going to be tried on the streets. You're going to be tried no matter where you go. The enemy is coming against us big time. But God's going to say, look it. Can you see this all the way through? Can you see, even though something's going wrong and bad, can you see it work to the good? That's vision of faith. Can it work to the good? Well, that's going to take something called cooperation. If you're not willing to cooperate, nothing can happen. When you throw in the towel, hello, and quit, that's cooperation with the devil. When you stand up and fight, that's cooperation with God. And we always have the victory. There's no defeat in the spirit, none. Is everybody okay? Amen. When things get tough, will we allow God to work it to the good? 1 Peter chapter 4. That's called vision of faith. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together, please. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But what? Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you, you know, one of the things that begins to happen when people get, when, when things start to get tough, there's that carnal arena that says, let's look for the easiest way out. And you know what happens? You know what the easiest way out is? Go to your past. And the enemy's waiting. The enemy's waiting. People look for the easiest way. The word says something very important. It says, those who are walking right with God, it, the road is narrow and difficult. But those who are walking with the devil, it says it's wide and broad, isn't it? So what the enemy wants to do, he wants to interrupt so you get off the narrow and difficult road on the easy way, the shortcut way, the simple way. But really, it isn't a simple way. That's just a lie to lead you into a trap and where you have to start all over. And let me tell you, trying to come back again is tough. Hallelujah. Glory. But rejoice in the extent you partake of Christ's sufferings. Verse 14. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he's blessing. On your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, or an evildoer, as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for what? Judgment to begin in the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey or follow the gospel of God? If the righteous is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a what? Faithful creator. Your trial is an opportunity to partake of his sufferings. Not, no, no, let me tell you, if you fall into lust and fornication, <laughs> that's not too much. I mean, that's, that's self-imposed sufferings. Amen. Amen. Does everybody understand that? There's an area, but even though that can still work to the good, does everybody understand that? If you're willing to get back into the spirit and start getting on line with God and cooperate with grace, which is his plan, faith gets restored where you have the vision of faith again. And you can see why you can say, okay, look at this can work to the good. I know I was an idiot. I know I was a bonehead. I did a stupid thing. But my father says all things can work to the good. So I'm going to seal this all the way through no matter what's going on. 
I'm going to cut loose of my past. I'm going to cut loose of the sin, the lust, all associations involved in that sinful life, and I'm going forward. I'm getting up. I'm shaking the dust off, and I'm going to go forward. And Father, increase my faith. Why? So I can see it all the way through. Remember, these trials and tribulations and partaking of his sufferings exposes your enemies' idols, removes impurities. And also, some of these impurities are bad habits. Bad habits, things that we mistrust. Flawed belief systems, lust, self, all of these things. Even that area where when things get tough, we are always, the enemy comes in. Look, at, there's an easy way out. He always tries to get you to call mom and dad. Call someone to loan you money. Call this. Call, is everybody with me? He's always trying to get you to do something. Instead of fighting and waiting on God to bring it to you. There's a difference, man. A difference. Not the king of glory. This is called relationship. That's relationships. That's what God wants. He wants you to know that he's your dad and you're his child and he's got everything waiting for you to bring to you. Amen. Oh, James chapter 1. I love it because I, I freak people out sometimes. I'll pull into a place and it says, you're not supposed to park here. Say, man, you can't park. I said, forget it. My father owns this place. <laughs> now, don't go out and do that and get a ticket and try. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I remember one time I was dropping this family off. You know, uh, and, and it and it said no no parking or no standing or whatever. And I said, you can't park here because. I said, don't worry about it. My father owns this place. Really? He owns the whole apartment complex? Yeah, he owns it all. He even owns this piece of property. <laughs> he owns that red light I just ran by mistake. Praise God. Lord, help <laughs> blind that camera. <laughs> blind that police officer I just drove by. You know, sometimes you get caught up in praise and worship, you know. You, <laughs> you want to hear a powerful testimony? My wife and I just got restored, and I didn't have a vehicle. In fact, I didn't have anything. I lost everything, and so I was going to go. So she said, take the car and go to a Bible study. Now, and, and so I, I got in this little Honda Civic, and great sound system, fantastic sound system, this thing. And I'm this little Honda thing. I'm not used to these little cars and whatever. And I said, like, I'm cruising along, praising, and worshiping and God. All of a sudden, there's a state trooper. Uh, whoo, snap. I looked, 85. Oh, God, Lord, help. Help. And he takes off, and he's coming at me. I said, Lord, you know, I just got my license back. And, he's, and, and, and so he's coming, and I start pulling over. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a car appears between me and this state trooper. And the Lord said, keep going. And I kept going. He pulled over somebody else. I'm thinking, where did that angel get a license from? <laughs> and I just kept going. I said, Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I could tell you so many testimonies of things that supernatural things that God has rescued my blessed assurance. I, I, you know, it's like, I don't know how you put up with me. But he says, you're my son and I love you. And he's my dad and I love him. Amen. When you've got relationship, come on, what better relationship can you have? What better connection can you have than the one that created the whole universe? <laughs> you know, I'm connected. They got all these mafia guys connected. Let me tell you, I got the greatest godfather. <laughs> Nobody's going to mess with him. Amen. Praise God. James chapter 1, verse 2. Amen. Would you read it with me? 
My brother, and count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces, that word means endurance. You're going to need to endure your trials and tribulations. You're going to need to endure to worship till you drop. <laughs> You're going to need to endure to fight for God's presence. You're going to need to endure temptation. You're going to need to endure when people are doing things that are wrong around you and expose it and walk away and not associate with it. Why? Because if you don't, then you approve of it. And you'll be judged just like them. Amen? We're going to need to endure. But let, let this patience, endurance, have its what? Perfect. perfect work that you may be perfect and complete in what? Lack nothing. Why are you going to lack nothing? Because you're going to have the vision of faith knowing that everything's going to work to the good. But if you keep your eyes on you, you can't see through. Is everybody okay? God builds in us endurance so that we can come to the end of ourselves, So that we can be complete, be perfect. So we have the vision of faith to see the good in all <laughs> the sifting, the fires, the trials, the persecutions. The rejections, the abandonments, amen? Faith will allow you, that vision of faith will allow you to see it all the way through to the good. And you know what? You'll get to a point where nobody wants to follow, too bad. I'm going to run the right course whether nobody else will. I don't care if it's with your spouse. I don't care if it's with your children. I don't care what's what. You run the right course because that's all that matters. Because you know what? When you get before God, it's you and him. And don't blame God for things. Amen? The word tells us that we're the ones that bring it on ourselves. Amen? Is everybody okay? Amen. 2 Corinthians 12. <clears throat> but if you have vision of faith, you can see it work to the good no matter what. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man of Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or not, I do not know. Or whether out of the body, I don't know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the what? Third heaven. That's where God's throne is. Second heaven is Satan's throne. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which are not lawful for man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will speak the truth, but I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. I think Paul finally realized his flesh was in the way. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it may, might uh, depart from me. And he said, my grace, my plan is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. See, when you get weak, it's when you allow him to get strong. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sakes. I don't know too many people that take pleasure in those things. <laughs> for when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. 
Truly, the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is it in which you were inferior to other churches, except that I may, I myself was not burdened to you to forgive me this wrong? Again, this is so powerful. When I am weak, when you are, I'm telling you, when you finally get to that point, it's like, man, Lord, I can't go on any further. You don't throw the title in. You make an exchange. You give your strength for his strength. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Why? Because, no, you know, everybody comes to the point of end. And that's when we have to rely on him. The problem is, is why wait till then? Let's start off all the time that way and we won't have to come to an end. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Seeing the good out of the sufferings. In other words, we must maintain the vision of faith to become a good steward. So he's looking for those for service and then he's looking those to become stewards. Is everybody okay? A good steward. Someone he can trust with his goods, with his possessions, with his people. In 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. What does it say? Be what? Be sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It says, resist him steadfast in the what? In the faith, which is the vision of faith to what? See that it's going to work to the good. Knowing that the same sufferings, hello, are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one, even though it sometimes it seems like you're the only one. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you what? Suffered a while. What's he going to do? Perfect you. Establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. He's going to what? He's going to perfect, establish, and strengthen. And then what? Settle you. So look, he's looking for you to be set in stone. Immovable. No matter what the circumstance is. So everybody got that? And to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Steadfast in the vision of faith that good will come out of your sufferings to perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you as a good steward. A good steward. Everyone say good steward. First Corinthians chapter 4. Vision of faith. First Corinthians 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ means we are servants of the anointing. The anointing does not... Now, I want you to understand this. We serve the anointing. The anointing doesn't serve us. So if you say, God, let's go here. He said, I ain't sending you there. Then he don't go with you. Lord, lead me today. Show me where I'm supposed to go. Establish my steps and my thoughts. What would you like me to do to please you? I commit to you my works. I acknowledge you in all of my ways. Amen? Which establishes thoughts and steps. So in this, he says, that we may be servants to Christ which means anointing, anointed one. We are servants to the anointing. The anointing does not serve us. We serve the anointing. And stewards of the mysteries of God. Do you realize how many mysteries you know? I got to share a lot of mysteries today. I, the Lord sent me to a place today, and it was powerful. I loved it. I love sharing about testimony, about Jesus, and so forth. And, you know, we carry the mysteries of God. We know the truths. That's a mystery in itself, isn't it? 
Most people don't even know the next event that's happening. Are you getting ready for the uh, next event? What event? The rapture. What's, what's the rapture? It's where the body of Christ is removed from the church. Oh, oh, really? Well, what happens? Well, if you're left behind, you cook. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Let me tell you about this. <laughs> See, many believers don't even know the surroundings and the influence and the purpose of the Feast of the Lord. Everything revol revolves around the Feast of the Lord's and the tabernacle. Everything. So we carry the mysteries of God. We're to be stewards of those mysteries. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. Faithful is someone who is not only consistent, but alert and has the vision of faith to see things that are going to work to the good no matter what. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by the human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. This Listen, Paul had a relationship so he wasn't concerned about man judging him. He allowed God to judge him. That's relationship. Therefore, um, uh, for I know nothing against myself, yet I'm not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. Philippians chapter 1. In verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you and all with joy for our fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will what? Complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, if we let him. Just as it is right for me to think of this of you all, because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all what? Discernment. That you may approve the things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and well of offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for what? The furtherance of the gospel. In other words, Paul had the vision of faith. He was persecuted. He was beat. And everything he kept looking at was, I'm able to infiltrate another area. See, he didn't let the circumstances stop him from there. He allowed those circumstances to work for him. Amen. Does everybody get that? Of course, Paul's circumstances were persecution of righteousness, not, not because he sinned. <laughs> so that it might become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ, even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambitions, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrew 5. Is everybody there? Amen. Hebrews chapter 5. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together in verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. 
as he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he what? Suffered. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. Of, um, and having been perfected, he became what? The author of eternal salvation to all who what? Obey him, which means follow him. Called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Now look at this. He said, for though by, by this time you should be all teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Again, individuals that are not reading the Bible, you can't say you're a believer and not believe the Bible. You can't say you're a believer and not read the Bible. Does everybody get it? That should be food for our spirit. If you're not feeding your spirit, you will become weak. Easily deceived. It's amazing how many people have come to the Lord and then they let the sword down. Don't even pick it up. And the only reason why they come to church is to get the word, but yet they're not even getting the, the word themselves. I mean, it's wonderful to get, come and get trained. Yes. But you need to feed yourself. Amen. Every day, we need to feed ourselves. We need to feed that spirit to get strong. Believe me, that's why prayer is important, isn't it? You miss prayer, you know it. The second day you miss it, everybody else knows it. Hello. Hallelujah. Verse 13. For everyone who partakes of only milk is unskilled... In the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. It's amazing that there are believers, supposedly 30-year believers, are still babes. They're still caught in the outer court. Still dealing with stupid stuff. Can't overcome it. Because they're not strong in the Lord and the power of his might. They're not staying alert and connected. Does everybody get this? We are fighters, and you must fight to the day you leave this place. But solid food belongs to those who are full of full age. That is those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both what is good and evil. In other words, evil you depart, evil you expose. You say no to temptation. It's simple. But if you're not filled with the Spirit, you're easily tricked. You're easily deceived. You're blinded. See, the enemy comes and brings scales over. He comes to bring another desire to interrupt, distract. That's why you must always check your motives. Why am I doing what I'm doing? And what's the source of this? What is the source of this influence? Why am I thinking this way? Why am I feeling this way? Why do I have a desire this way? Why am I being tempted? Does everybody get this? If you're not monitoring and going to the source of anything or everything, then you're going to be easily swayed. Hallelujah. Learn obedience by suffering, able to maintain vision of faith, seeing the good out of your trials to become a good steward of his word, of his word and his will, of his word and his will, of his word and his will. It's amazing. People pull out Bibles. They don't even know where Genesis is. Hallelujah. Col Colossians chapter 1. Yeah, I've been a believer in 30 years. Genesis. Isn't that down the street next to that bar? No. Hebrews? What do you mean Hebrews? Is there a Hebrew in here?
course, I have to say, I always thought the book of Job was a place of employment. <laughs> Job. And they got jobs in this Bible, too. <laughs> it's amazing. What a manual. <laughs> Emmanuel. Colossians 1, 24. Vision of faith. Seeing things work to the good. Colossians 1, 24. Let's speak it. I now rejoice in my sufferings, hello, for you, and fill up my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the what? Stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that, he, that we may present every man perfect. Everyone say perfect, perfect. in Christ. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Praise God. Romans 8. Vision of faith. Is everybody there? Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things, what? Work together for good to those who, what? Love God to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his. Remember, Jesus is looking for Jesus. Amen. Amen. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we, he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present or things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, nothing will separate us, his love towards us, but the enemy likes to breach our love towards him. Amen? In Psalm 16. And he does it by interruption, doesn't he? You know, God keeps one eye on the world and one eye on us. <laughs> we need to keep one eye on the, uh, on the Lord and one eye on your enemy. Amen. But we need to keep both hands on, holding on to him so everybody understand it. You never let go of both hands. When you let go of one hand, what happens? You go in a circle. Psalm 16, verse 7. Let's speak it together. I will what? Bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always what? Before me. Whoa, that's relationship. I love that. I always set the Lord before me. 
Because he is at my right hand, I shall what? I won't be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, my glory rejoices, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your holy one to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I always put the Lord before me. Always put the Lord before me. He's always right there. So then you're communicating with him. So every decision is not made on your own. It's made with cooperation. 1 John 5. First John chapter 5, and verse 1. <clears throat> is everybody there? Let's speak it. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and whoever loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his what? Commandments. Now I want you to understand something. He's not talking about the Ten Commandments even though that's a part of it. He's talking about the things that he says in your personal relationship. Those are called commands. When God speaks, it's a command. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not what? Burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our what? Our vision of what? Faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And I'm going to close in Hebrews 13. <clears throat> Vision of faith. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Therefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his with his what? Own blood suffered outside the gate. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city but we seek the one to come. Therefore by him, let us what? Continue, 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 continually offer the what? Sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with what such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. As those who must give account, let them do with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things, desiring to live honorably. But especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, to the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you what? Complete in every good work to do his will, working in you which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. I pray that the seed has been empower, imparted in each and every one of us and empowered us to have the vision of faith and see it all the way through. To see those things according to your promises, your will and covenant. That you're faithful to complete what you started. And that all of our circumstances and trials and tribulations are to train us for service, for stewardship. And so you can trust us. Lord, we are honored and blessed to receive your word. Protect that seed. Let it grow. 
and protect your people. Raise them up to become warriors in these last days and last moments. Give them a heart set towards you. One eye on you and one eye on their enemy. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.